It is July 15th, 2019, and for some people, it's just a regular day, but for us Amazon sellers, for you and I, it is Prime Day. So first of all, thank you Jeff Bezos for today, because look at these numbers. So it is, what time is it? It's 2.44 p.m. on the East Coast, already $800 in sales. Actually, no, a lot more. How much is that? Almost $1,000 in sales, it's not even midday. There's a lot more coming, so I'll show you the rest of it today. But obviously not every day is like this. And today's video is about a less exciting period in my Amazon business. I made a mistake that I knew that I should not have made, that I've talked about here saying that you guys shouldn't make, but for some reason, I still did it. I wanna share it with you guys here so that you can avoid it and tell you what went wrong and what should not happen next time and what I learned from it. So watch this video to learn and avoid making stupid mistakes like like mine. What's up, welcome back guys, Sam and Brax here. And in this video, I wanna show you a mistake that I did. And it's mainly about inventory management, running out of stock, cash flow issues, all these headaches that every single Amazon seller goes through. So I wanna show you how I lost rank big time for the first time ever really after running out of stock. And as you can see here, it was going well and then ran out of stock and then boom, I really had to struggle to get back up. But as you can see today, I'm number one, and I'm gonna talk about how I did that today. It took a lot of work. Same thing here, that was one of my best keywords. And then boom, really took a hit. Same thing here. And I wanna talk about how I created an Excel sheet like this one, and I'll explain it to you. To really try to stay in stock and hopefully never have this happen again, because you might ask, You've been selling for a while. Why are you still running out of stock? Why haven't you learned your lesson? I'm asking the same question, but no, this is how it works. You order a product and then if your lead time is long like mine is, then it's even harder. So it takes mine 30 days to manufacture, 30 days to ship by sea. So that's 60 days where you don't have a choice but to wait for the products. If you run out of stock earlier, then you run out of stock earlier and then you take the hit just like here. The best that you can do is before those 60 days, you need to do your calculations so that you order and hope that you get back in stock before sales speed up. So let's say you're selling and then you average around 10 sales a day, then it's easy to know when you're gonna run out of stock, even with the two months of lead period. So you know that. But what usually happens is that you start doing either well or not well or whatever you're, you're doing at first, and then it gets better and better. And sometimes it gets a lot better. And by that time, it's too late to change everything. It's like, you look at the numbers and you're like, oh, I should have ordered two weeks ago or I should have ordered yesterday because of that quick jump in sales. So if that's still happening to you, I guess it's not the end of the world. And it's, it's not a huge, huge mistake to beat yourself up for because it's not an easy thing to forecast. That's the word that I was looking for. But again, I've been running out of stock my whole FBA career. I've seen it happen, I've done it before, I've come back in stock and things have been good. But this time, I messed up, I made a mistake, and I hurt my ranking even after coming back in stock. So in the past, what usually happens is that I'm selling and then I start selling more than expected and then I run out of stock. What I usually do is as soon as I sell that last unit, I close the listing. And be careful, you close it, you don't delete it. So you just click on close listing, not delete listing, otherwise it's gone forever. So there's nothing really that says that closing the listing helps or not. I've just tried with and without doing it and other people have done the same. And people have seen that closing the listing slightly helps in your with your keyword ranking when you come back in stock. So I usually close the listing. And then the second thing that I do that's very important that I messed up on this time is I don't slow down sales. I don't try to sell less to, to stay in stock. I don't ruin my conversion rates. I don't ruin my, my data. I keep selling. I even sometimes sell even more the last few days and then I let it run out of stock and then I wait for uh, the new batch to come in. And what usually used to happen is when I used to do this, I come back in stock and then I see my, my listing come up on the first page on the same keywords that it used to be on the first page for. Maybe not the same position, maybe not position one, two or three that it used to be, but at least it's still on the first page. So that's what used to happen. But this time, for some reason, I decided to try something new. I decided to start slowing down sales. I decided to try to control how many sales I get per day so that I don't run out of stock because I had already ordered the new batch and I was waiting for it. So I thought, you know what? 
if I lose my ranking, I know how to rank back, whatever, which honestly is the case. Like I, I lost my ranking, but now I'm back on position one. I know how to rank back, but it costs a lot of money and it costs a lot of units to rank back. So I decided to try to test slowing down sales because in the past, when I used to give you the advice of don't slow down sales, it was from what other people were telling me. And they're not, it's not like I'm listening to, to just random people. I did a video with Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout who sees a lot of Amazon data and he said the same thing. He said, don't hurt your conversion rate. Don't slow down sales. But this time I decided to test for myself and really see what happens if I do it myself so that I can at least say, don't do it from experience. Well, that wasn't really the, the, the only reason. The reason was to slow down sales to stay in stock. So here's what I did and what you should avoid. Number one, I used to pause PPC whenever I get the amount of sales that I want. And that's, that's, even, that's something that I did not even mention. Messing up your PPC history data and messing up how well your PPC campaigns are doing. So every day, let's say I was aiming for 12 sales a day. Whenever I'd get 10, 11, 12, pause PPC completely and then sales either would stop or I'd get less than usual. So what happened there was my PPC campaigns were all messed up. They would start getting some data, they'd understand what they're doing, because it's PPC works in a way where it looks at what's working and then it does more of that, or it's, it's really learning as it goes. So if you're stopping it multiple times, it has to start back up and it has to start learning again. So you're messing up the flow. It's, it sort of has to restart all over again. That was my first mistake. I was pausing PPC every day after getting the amount of sales that I wanted. Something else that I tried was I raised my prices. Now raising your prices is not the issue in itself. The issue is when you raise your prices and you sell less. Because what happens there is you either hurt your click-through rate or your conversion rate or both. So people see your listing and they don't click on it that's hurting your click-through rate. Or people click on your listing and then they see someone else, another listing at the bottom that's cheaper and they click on that, so that's hurting your conversion rate. And these two things really affect ranking. People clicking on your listing and not buying, that's horrible for your, for your ranking. But if you raise your price and people still buy and your conversion rate's still the same, then cool, you know that you can sell at that price. And that's what used to happen in the past. I'd raise my price, it goes well, and then I keep that price forever. But this time that was, way after Christmas. It was February, let me see. No, it was in May. Yeah, it was in April and May, which these months are usually less performing or people buy less than when they used to during Christmas. So I raised my price. There weren't as many people willing to buy at that price. That hurt. One more thing that I did that hurt my ranking was I decreased the bids in my PPC campaigns. So another attempt at slowing down sales and at spending less and making a bit more money and not running out of stock before the new batch comes in was decreasing a tiny bit the bids in my campaigns. I didn't do this too much, I was just testing it, but that was another thing that I should not have done. I should have just continued with my PPC optimization the way that I usually do it, the rules, the rules that I have, whatever I usually do, and not played with the way that's working right now. So all that to say, do not slow down your sales, do not hurt your conversion rate, do not hurt your click-through rate. Do not hurt your ranking, which if you hurt the, the ones before, you're hurting your ranking. If you're running out of stock, let everything run as it is running. Do not change anything. Do not hurt any of these. And as soon as you run out of stock, close your listing and then wait until you're back in stock. You'll see that you rank back or you don't lose too much of your ranking. Of course, your BSR is going to be different. Your bestseller rank, that number is going to be much higher so it's a bigger number but i'm talking about keyword ranking the positions on specific keywords that is what you want to preserve because that number doesn't matter if that number is a million which it's not going to be if you're ranking well but if that number is high but you're on page one for important keywords that's what really matters because customers are buying from these pages from these keywords let's do another quick update on the sales again today is prime day it is one of the best days of the year and it's like christmas but in july so we're at so we're at a thousand so it says 41 sales but if i click on orders it says 51 sales so i guess it's taking some time to upload but this is today and tomorrow are going to be probably the best days of the year along with black friday but i wasn't selling i was no i don't think i was properly selling last black friday that was when i had just started selling this product and let me show you the difference between the last 30 days and today. So the last 30 days, you can see how after I got back in stock, the rank, my ranking hurt my sales. It was like 100 a day, 200, 300 on a good day. But then here, 
I ran Facebook ads. I did my whole search find buy method. I ranked on page one for some very, very big keywords. And as you can see, I stopped my campaign a few days ago. So you can see how the sales obviously increased. And then today, compared to everything else, it's only like, what, 3 p.m.? What time is it? 4 p.m. almost. And we're at $1,000. So I think in the next two days, we're going to do three thousand maybe three thousand dollars i'd say four thousand dollars and it's gonna be huge also today's sales are hugely affected by the prime day coupon which that's something that i think it's new i've never seen it before amazon gave us the option to put a prime coupon which is specific for prime buyers which is smart of them it's like if you don't have a prime account you can't use this coupon so now people want to get the prime account and for some reason i'm looking at my keywords now i'm like the only one that has it for this product for my product so now if you're a customer looking to buy products that are on discount specifically for prime day if you click on that prime coupon or if you search with the prime uh, category or the prime filter and you search my product i'm like the first one that shows up even though there's thousands and thousands of other uh, competitors i'm like the first one that shows up and then if you look here let me zoom in this is like a 24,000 search volume today only today because of what's going on today it took me from position eight to position one so on that keyword i'm selling the best that's what this is telling you on that big big keyword no one's beating me with the sales today and that's really today because of the prime discount by the way guys this is a keyword tracker tool that comes with helium 10 you have to track your keywords if you're serious about selling on Amazon. You have to know where you're ranking and where Amazon is putting you organically and where you want to target and move up in positions. So get Helium 10. I have a seven day free trial for you guys. You can try it for seven days and then cancel if you don't like it. It's code BRAX50 with the link in the description below. So, so check it out, get it, use it. You have to take advantage of a tool like this. All right, so now let's talk about my Excel sheet that I wanted to show you and how I've been forecasting the whole cash flow, running out of stock, reordering, all that stuff. So these are numbers, these are made up numbers, but this is how I personally use this. And you can create something like this pretty easily. The first thing that I put in is how many days I wanna be in sales. Or in other words, if I get my stock today, if I get my products today into Amazon, how many days do I want to be selling before I have to reorder? right so how many days where i'm i don't have to talk to my supplier at all so let's say it's 45 and then you put in your current average daily sales and that's the hard one because the first week when you're selling it could be five and then and then it becomes seven and then it becomes ten and that's what changes when you have to reorder and then your projected average daily sales i put this because when i want to reorder i'm assuming that with the next batch since i have more products i can give more away to rank better which means that i can sell more every day and my goal is to get to like 25 sales a day with this product right now it went from two to three after i lost ranking and came back in stock right now it's at 10 14 but these days you know there's prime day there's a few things here and there so it's not accurate exactly what the average is but it's getting higher and higher so you choose how many days you want to stay in sales and you can see the uh, equations here if you want to copy them. And then you choose what you want to be selling, ideally. So then it tells you how many units you need to order, when you need to order. So when I have 612 units left in stock in Amazon, with Amazon, I need to contact my supplier and get things moving. And that is 51 times the average sales per day and 51 is 30 days where i have to manufacture the product and that number here is how many units you need to have before your next batch comes in in other words if it takes me 30 days to manufacture the product and then let's say two weeks for the air portion to come in because i split it between air and sea then 51 that's 30 days plus two weeks or three weeks whoops 30 days plus two weeks plus some buffer time then in that time where I'm waiting for the stock to come in, I need to have 612 units in stock to be selling so that I don't run out of stock. And as you see, there's a buffer time just so that I don't run out of stock. Yet you still do. So you see, it's not that easy. Units by air, that's 20 days, which is 20 days between getting the air units and getting the C units. That time difference, I need to have units in stock and that's 240 units. 
Ideally, I'd love to do only C. I'll probably get to that point soon, but at this point, when we're rushing things, when we're still getting used to the averages, the average isn't even accurate, it's not even stable enough, I'm still doing air and C. And then units by C is just the difference. Also, the 2000 units, that's gonna be the new batch that I get, and that's gonna cover 45 days of selling, which is this, so D6, plus 60 days of lead time before I have to reorder again and that's uh, 30 days of manufacturing, 30 days of sea shipping, times the average daily sales that I'm projecting to be doing later. As you can see in this one, I don't factor in air shipping. You could, but like I said, ideally I just wanna do C, so this would ideally be the number. Now this is for how much to order, but the problem with running out of stock isn't only about how much to order, but it's also, do I have the money to order? So that's what this is for right here. So I realized that you might need 14,000 to order this batch, but you don't need it all at once, right? The upfront cost, if I talk to my supplier today, I need to spend only 30% of whatever my supplier needs. So that's the upfront cost. So if I'm doing my math and I look at this and I'm like, okay, we need to reorder in 30 days. Am I gonna have $3,000 only? That's gonna be enough. I'm gonna have it, cool, I can reorder. And then 30 days after that, when I need to pay the 70%, that's how much I need to pay, which is 70% to my supplier plus air shipping because you do air shipping as soon as it's done plus G15, G, yeah, G15 is inspection. So you do inspection at the 30 day mark once everything has been manufactured. And then the last thing is my C shipping. I pay it when it goes, when it gets to Amazon, which is 60 days from day zero. As you can see, $14,000 are not paid up front, so I don't have to have that much in the bank when I reorder. I just have to have $3,000 and obviously know that I'm getting that money later. If I'm selling well on Amazon, if everything's going well, you can even see what's coming later on Amazon. I need to have that much. Now, even better, you can put that $3,000 on a credit card, get the points that you, you're gonna get, go travel for free later, but put it on a credit card, credit card and then you can pay it 30 to 50 days later, depending on your bank and your credit card. So imagine you put $3,000, you don't have to pay it until 50 days later. But I'm not gonna tell you to do that because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not gonna give you advice on this. This is up to you to decide what to do. I figured this out on my own because of my own experience and that's it. All right guys, I'm going to sleep. It's 1 a.m. But this is the last 2,237, but it's actually wrong because for some reason the orders are updating faster than the actual sales so it says 121 i think orders so that's a lot of sales in one day i've never ever seen anything like this so i'm gonna sleep now and we'll see how it goes until the end of the night and then we'll see how tomorrow goes because there's still another day for prime day i hope you guys are selling as much as i am and even more and i hope everyone's prime day is as successful If you like this video, please click the thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a few things about what not to do. Learn this from my experience so that you don't have to experience it yourself. And if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe and click on the bell to get notified when I post. So this was about how I lost ranking. If you wanna see how I gained ranking, how I launched, relaunched my product and got to that position number one, Click here to watch that video. I explain my methods of how I rank and how I confidently rank for any keyword with any search volume. Click right here to watch it and I'll see you guys there. Peace. What we wanna do is wanna focus on two things. Number one, our full price purchases. Number two, our search, find, and buy.